Hi, and welcome to Prater Natural Mysteries with your host, Ivo Trees Littles and Dr. Lovey. We will take a closer look into the paranormal, supernatural, and the unexplained. But before we get into that, how are you doing, Dr. Lovey? Wonderful. <laughs> how are you doing today? I'm doing okay. I'm doing doing okay. <laughs> a, little, a little tired, but <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> We're I'm always exploring and learning. Yeah. Um, today we will be talking about uh, vengeful ghosts. Um, have you ever experienced any vengeful ghosts? Well, first of all, let's talk about what is a vengeful ghost, a ghost that comes back and just not only haunts you, but does some damage <laughs> in some form. A specific type of ghost is known as the purposeful ghost. And these are spirits that have a specific reason for returning from the grave. The reason for returning, a search of justice, a need to relay a message, um, checking in on relatives, and a subset of purposeful ghosts are also known as vengeful ghosts. And these are the ones that are exceptionally dangerous. Yes. And I found a lot of information on that because I, when I first said it, like vengeful ghosts, it was just a topic. But then it turns out it was it's a whole thing about it out There's there. A lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you experienced or know someone who experienced a vengeful ghost uh, ex like experience situation? I personally have not experienced a vengeful ghost. Mm, I do know someone who had a vengeful ghost experience with a female ghost in Japan in the 1970s. Um, but she was actually known to have been murdered at that hotel in the early uh, 1960s. And she was incredibly angry and she wanted into the hotel room where they were staying. I have read tons and tons of research papers, tons and tons of personal experiences. About that ghost, mm -hmm. did it really want it in the hotel room? What was it trying to do to get into the hotel room? Slamming on the door. Oof. She did come through the door eventually and then she disappeared. So, so, so the door broke open, they said. No, she came through the door. Oh, came through the door. I don't know oh. why she wasn't. Now, <laughs> it makes you wonder why couldn't she come through the door originally? Yes. But she was pounding and pounding for about half an hour, woke up the two occupants of the room, and on the her third try, she actually came through the door in her, her white kimono robe and came like floating towards the bed and then disappeared. That's interesting. Cause it's like, well, why didn't she come through the door? Maybe she wanted to leave a mark. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe she knew she could come through the door. Stories of ghosts, usually who start by just knocking on your outside door. Maybe you hear scratches at your window. There are a lot of stories of things starting slow and then escalating. I don't, <laughs> I think I would have escalated right on out. <laughs> <laughs> Once that happens, we're banging on the door. Like, how long was she doing that till she came in? Did they say? It was it was from 3 a.m. to about 3.30. It's always the 3 a.m. <laughs> the magic hour where the veil is the thinnest? I have no idea. There are a lot of speculations as to why that happens. And there are specific rays that hit from the sun to the earth during the daytime. And when parts of the earth are in shade away from the sun... There are different um, electromagnetic fields that occur and rays that are not penetrating because they're hitting the earth on the, on the light side. So there's speculation that that may actually have something to do with it. But again, it's all physics and theory and we're trying to figure it out. That's a lot of figuring out. <clears throat> so back to the vengeful ghost. <laughs> when I hear this stuff, I, I scare myself. <laughs> I'm hosting a show that scares me. <laughs> It's the most hilarious thing I've ever known. It's, it's, um, yeah, I have my own fears, to, my own fears to face, but. It's good so, to challenge ourselves this way, though. To face yeah. Fears. So when I looked up Vengeful Ghost, um, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of ghosts out there. A lot of folklore, mythology. It seemed like every continent. <laughs> <laughs> has their own version of a vengeful ghost, someone who died horribly or a ritual wasn't performed right. And 
even in that ha when that happens, uh, the spirit was not able to lay to rest, and it just roams, you know, where wherever they're from, or even haunts a family, specific family, and not only does it just walk around, it, it actually does things, you know, beat on walls, uh, terrorize, um, cause death and destruction. Um, there's a lot of things like that. It can and, cause illness, definitely. Yeah. Um, there, I mean, there's legendary creatures, especially around um, Japan. I think Japan and China or, or in Africa or the three most that I have read that have the most um, vengeful ghosts or hauntings, um, legends and folklores and mythology. Have you noticed that too, or or, or that's just me? <laughs> the Asian cultures have that very strict belief on karma and things being justified. So, and then also there's a great deal of ceremony involved in their burial. Yeah. So I could see how that would, <clears throat> would come up over and over in those societies. Yeah, you you don't really hear too much of vengeful ghosts here in the States. However, um, I mean, if you really get specific, you know, there's a certain bridge um, in a certain place where you drive and a car is following you. And then once you get off the bridge, it's no longer following you. I mean, then you have like the Lizzie Borden house, um, but those are, they're not really vengeful. They're just hauntings, I think. Just maybe if you see something, maybe if you don't, someone died terribly, but the victims don't come after you. I mean, it, it just kind of there. Right. Um, I think the other one of the, the haunting places that I would like to visit is the Gettysburg, where that was the most bloodiest war um on american soil a lot of activity on those battlefields without question yeah so i mean but you never hear about any of those ghosts attacking anyone or someone was just in the area i don't know i haven't have you heard anything in the states a vengeful ghost eagle cases in the united states where a ghost is cited as giving evidence against its murderer and the man was prosecuted successfully. So in a courtroom of law in the United States, it was accepted that a ghost pointed her finger straight at her husband and said, he's the one that killed me. And that case, let's find that one. If they could see my face, <laughs> <The green, laughs> I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> the Greenbrier ghost of 1897 was a court case where the ghost gave testimony to her mother and the mother then brought evidence to the townsfolk. Um, her name was Zona Hester Shoe, and um, apparently her husband snapped her neck and claimed that it was natural causes. And Zona visited her mother several nights after her death, saying that her husband had killed her, had snapped her neck and to exhume her body, which the mother then convinced the town folk to do and they found evidence that she had been murdered and during that court case that mother's testimony that zona had come and visited her was given and was enough to convict him there's also another case in u.s history uh strambovsky versus ackley in 1995 which the owner had previously advertised to the public that the house had been haunted and the court decided that as a matter of law, the house is haunted. So that is in the court court books. Mm. Yep. It's well, slap me around and call me Susie. <laughs> there are a ton of other legal cases where people claim, let's just say the devil made me do it. Mm -hmm. Demon possession, <clears throat> ghost spirits were whispering to me, something else took over my body and caused me to do harm to other people. So there are murderers who claim that they killed and then have blackouts and don't remember killing people. That would be like a demonic possession, or in some cases, it doesn't seem so demonic. It seems like a ghost has taken them over. Um, certainly, certainly the Warrens believed that that occurred. Um, so we would cite the movie, like, The Devil Made Me Do It. So in the 1980s, a little boy was, was demon-possessed. He was an 11-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. And during one of the exorcis exorcisms, um, the boyfriend of the sister said, 
jump into me, take on me if you're going to pick on a little boy. And the demons did exactly that. And he went on to commit a murder. And the Warrens fully believed that that was because of demonic possession. See, when I hear stuff like that, do you think it's a a fine line of someone being possessed or someone actually consciously know they committed some kind of murder? Because, I mean, anyone could say a demon possessed me, but are we talking as a, a religious standpoint? Because then if you grew up in the church, um, like I did when I was young, it's just like, oh, the devil is taking over, you, you know, it's making you do things. Right. So when you're taught that, and then as an adult, it, it doesn't make sense. But I guess some people can't um, decipher what is what anymore at that point. Um, if maybe there's a mental problem or, or injury or something. But to me, hearing it, I guess being the devil's advocate. <laughs> If someone said, I'm possessed, the devil made me do it. I'm like, well, I, 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 it's hard to believe that something, some kind of spirit could get into your body to make you do things. Um, I've been very angry. You want to go over there and knock them out. But as I'm knocking them out, I don't see myself saying, oh, the devil made me do it. I mean, it just seems kind of you're not taking the full responsibility. Like, do you see like a fine line between that? Certainly the courts have judged that anyone can claim that and therefore there's no evidence given. Um, but if we take background history into, for example, say a couple are loving and they've been together for four years and all of a sudden the man starts blacking out or starts behaving completely different. We might say perhaps he has a brain tour tumor. We might say maybe he has a neurological disease. Some people, devout um, Catholics, might say he is possessed or being imposed upon by a spirit. Now, if through a history pattern, his beloved notices that he looks different, his face changes, his friends are like, that is not him. His wife swears those are not his eyes. Those eyes go completely black. I don't know why that happens. And then he comes to eventually those would be historical precursors showing that that could possibly be a, a possession. Now, whether that's a demonic possession or a spirit possession, or whether that's a mental uh, illness, all of that's certainly up for debate. We don't have all the answers. So I, I'm assuming they would, you know, use scientific uh, research on the victim or the person that believes this way. And once they do all the testing and like, nah, they just, they really committed these crimes because they wanted to. I think once the crime is committed per se, that this individual, this theoretical individual that we've created, <clears throat> this man goes out and murders. It's still a question of free will. He chose to go do so. He is therefore a murderer and will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. It's, it's just strange. <laughs> But let's put it then this it, way. There are a ton of theories that say, where does mental illness come from? Now, people who have had demonic infestation or have had um, spirit infestation um, experience things whispering in their heads. They experience thoughts that they feel aren't their own. They have personality changes. Some people theorize that perhaps mental illness can be affected by spirits, by the energy left in the in the the ether, I suppose. So, is that saying as venge vengeful ghosts what would uh, possess these people because they're more vulnerable to make them do things? I'm not sure what would cause the vulnerability. Like some people would say, if you're super positive, you're not vulnerable at all, and some people would say, if you're a very negative person, perhaps you're open to more negativity in your life. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, to to what extent, where do thoughts come from? Yeah. Who's to say that that thought originated in our head or from a cartoon that we watched when we were five years old? Or <laughs> I just happened to walk by a dead grandma that was like singing, singing in the rain, and that just popped into my head. Like, mm. <laughs> no one knows these things. If ghosts are not, okay, just to, just to go on this. Uh -huh. If ghosts are not real, we as humans have the ability to psychosomatically injure ourselves through fear. So yes, 
we still get affected. If ghosts are real, they are energy and we are bioelectric machines that can still be affected. So yes, the answer is yes. Ghosts can influence and there are some that have shown that they can hurt people. It, it just makes it all, it, it's like, it's hard to believe, but then when you see evidence, like when you see the proof, like scientific in doc, documents and things like that, it's like, what well, what makes these people prone to these kind of ghosts versus someone that isn't? I'll cite like, you one other one, historically speaking. And this mm -hmm. one was recorded by multiple witnesses. Al Capone, when he was in jail, Oh was yeah, nightly by a creature that he screamed out was called Jimmy. So much to the point that he hired a medium named Alice Britt to find what Jimmy wanted, and she was never able successfully to do so. He was terrorized for years and years and years by this vengeful ghost, and he fully believed that it was, was someone that he had killed, but he didn't know what they wanted from him. So here he is, a very violent man, a very hardened man, used to violence, and yet somehow one spirit got through to him every single night and kept at him. Hmm. I, I've, I've heard that he was being haunted, but I didn't hear of it that extent. Um, that's <laughs> it's just so creepy. It's like, I'm trying to like not creep myself out, <laughs> but at the same time, it's just, it's so fascinating that there are, there are things out there that we, that we're trying to, to understand and bring logic into it but sometimes i think you just can't do that it just happens but then you wonder is these people crazy like you're 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 in between of all of that another thing that i was looking up on that is exorcisms and religious um ceremonies and customs some of them have to be performed when someone dies um, especially if they died a violent death. Um, if not, they will come back and, you know, tear up the crops, kill the animals, kill the people around them, bring disease. Um, how much do you believe in that? Like, what scientific research um, have you came across, if any, of that actually happening? Because a lot of these are like folklores and mythology but nothing so recent now, that's what I'm saying. I mean, if you, if you look at the Jewish custom of sitting with the body for several days, that's very specifically to ensure that everything is, is at, at peace, I believe. I would like to research that more and learn more. Um, I believe that the Korean custom is to also sit with the body for three days. Um, once upon a time in America, we used to have our parlors and the bodies would sit you know, during the viewing while we would say goodbye. Um, let's put it this way. If a person throughout their entire life believes that they must be buried in a certain way in order to be at peace and they don't get buried that way, i.e. grandma didn't get to wear her blue dress, she gonna be really upset if we <laughs> wear her blue dress. And I know my grandma wanted to be in her blue dress. So is it possible that, that spirit will come back and be a little angry? It's completely possible. I mean, our our character is supposed to live on and our emotions and our experiences live on afterwards, according to some theories. And it's quite possible that that person would feel that they had been. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the worst part. Like when a, when a, when a ghost comes back, i.e. If, if that person has died violently, a woman has been murdered on the streets and she comes back, there are stories, um, ghosts that were beheaded in Britain 1600 1700s come back and they're still incredibly upset trying to find the person that that killed them but they're still directing their anger at people that are living who are so far beyond the generations where they can even get justice mm -hmm. so yeah i was reading about that too and i just felt like well they would never get justice that's because the the people that they're they're trying to um scare attack or or can have them confess or long dead they're long gone right um and they've been hunting the same place for hundreds of years that now, has to just be there are uh, tales of people who have been murdered 
And generations later, other people who have moved into that house eventually discover the whole story of the ghost. And that seems to put that ghost at rest, like just being able to tell their life story or just being able to know that someone else knows that they were harmed and murdered seems to be another way of, of allowing peace. Yeah, I um, some examples of the the vengeful ghost spirits that lurking in different parts of the world. I, I, I have a list here now. I'm not going to say the entire list because uh -huh. <laughs> we don't have all day. Um, some of the names are very difficult because I mean, they're from Africa, ancient Rome, ancient exactly. Greece, UK. I mean, Jewish, uh, China, Vietnam, Pakistan, Japan. I mean, some of the names of these ghosts are almost impossible because obviously I don't speak um, <laughs> that language. But um, there's some that actually um, st st um, stood out. Yeah. So one from Africa, uh, I don't, may maybe you've he heard of these, but um, me her name is Madame Koi Koi. Ooh. I hope I'm saying this. K-O-I, K-O-I, Koi. Mm -hmm. Ooh. All right. Uh, it's a ghost of a female school teacher in Africa, and also it's an urban legend, who haunts boarding schools after some students caused her death. So like you just said, they haunt a generation that has nothing to do with them, and they're just... All those it, kids deserve it. Every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Generations later, they're still but, up to no good. But then we would have to research, well, what did they do? You know what I'm saying? To cause her death. Mm -hmm. um, but she's still lurking. I mean, that's one of them. Oh, uh, another one is in the uh, United Kingdom called the Green Lady. A restless female spirit uh, said to haunt certain locations in Scotland. And uh, I think it's Crathy's Castle. Uh, Ca Castle. Oh, my God. Castle. <laughs> Not Castle. All these castles, I mean, she's just haunting them uh, right. because she was murdered in a green dress and the, some of the servants stuffed her in the chimney. <gasps> and you can hear her footsteps as she walks in sadness. That is terrible. That is, it's sad. That is so sad. It's, it's like, and she's just still walking. She's there still there. There are so <laughs> many stories of loved ones coming back and they appear in the outfit that they died in or they appear in the outfit they were buried in. Uh, there is one tale of a grandpa coming back and he was aged 89 when he died, but when he came back, he was back in World War II uniform as a young man, just saying goodbye. But that she's still wearing her green dress is, is, is very normal. They seem to appear in what they either passed in or what they were buried in. Um, China... Uh, and Vietnam, for some reason, they're they're together on this list, this part of the list. A uh, Mogwai, <laughs> <laughs> a vengeful ghost or demon in Chinese mythology. The only Mogwai I knew was in the movie Gremlins. Gremlins. So vengeful ghost, a demon. So it can be like the demon, like a demon of a Mogwai. Gizmo. I mean. Mogwai. I mean, <laughs> I was like, I don't know that that could be a miss, uh, a, a miss typo here. For me. <laughs> but, we'll look it up. I'm sure they got the name from somewhere. Yeah. Well, I'm reading from also other sources, other sources, <laughs> and uh, Wikipedia. <laughs> so, how much of it's truth? We don't know. Um, one more, because some of these names I cannot. Uh, say, and I do not want to butcher them because I don't want to make anyone angry, but <laughs> I would probably put the list and link and stuff like that so other people can um, look. But Japan, I think it's on Rio? On Rio. Oh my goodness. Ooh, it's O-N-R-Y-O. -O. Now anything Japan is terrifying mm -hmm. um, when it comes to stuff like this. It's a generic Japanese folklore ghost, Yuri who comes uh, back from purgatory for a wrong death uh, during their lifetime. So I, I think this is just anyone who comes back. It's not a specific name for them. It's just if you have a vengeful death, 
um, I mean, if you die a terrible death, you coming back. Um, and I think the movie, um, The Grudge, is, is is a really good, oh, oh my God. a vengeful ghost. I mean, that came out in 2004 and it was terrifying. Yes. Yep. Theater was packed. Uh, Takashi Shimizu. Oh, um, yeah. He also did The Howling Village that recently just came out oh. um, through Dread Central. Ooh, I but, but yeah, but Sam Remy was one of the producers and Takashi, he uh, did um, the original and then he came to America and called it The Grud. So, so he brought it here and he directed that. It was written by someone else, but he directed it. So um, that movie was terrifying. And towards the end, you kind of see exactly how that ghost got the way she was. The noises she made, the movements, <laughs> just terrifying. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. There was a, a Halloween haunt where you were walking up and you realize that's the house you're about to walk into. And it was terrifying because I'm like, I know I don't want to go in that house. I do not want to go in that house. Yeah. <laughs> See, I wouldn't have went into that house. <laughs> <laughs> they recreated it. It was great. Um, I could barely go into the not scary farmhouses. So anything haunting like that. But yeah, that that movie explained that noise she was making. Uh, it was because she was choked so badly. Um, she was trying to get air and that was the sound she was making. Now, that's a very good point because there are occurrences and there's one thing I can think of right now where a woman moved into a little grandma um, mother-in-law's house on someone else's property and she would hear like heavy breathing in her ear and she would hear someone like brush her hair and the things that she experienced in that house were actually what the victim experienced in her time of death, the gasping for air, the whispering in, in the ear, um, being in the shower and feeling someone brush against your hair. And mm. so in a way that ghost was vengeful, but wanted so desperately for someone else to know her pain that she shared it with that, that tenant. Yeah. Um, another example of that, of, of similar what you just said, because uh, you said the whisper in the ear and it popped in my head, Candyman. Ooh. Now, Candyman is a, another movie of a vengeful ghost. And once you see the movies, um, the 92 and the recently that just came out, uh -huh. uh, Nia DaCosta's Candyman, people believe is Jordan Peele's Candyman. It is not Jordan Peele. He helped write it, but he is not the running force. I just asked the Put that out there. It is Nia DaCosta's film. So it's grossing very well. It's yeah, it's I saw that money. film. Um, have you haven't seen it, right? I've not seen it yet. No, oh my god, bring you're so sensitive, you might bring tissue. Okay. Okay. I, will, I, I would say, bring some tissue and some water just to just to just to like breathe. Like, oh my god, but it's it's um. Those are example of vengeful ghosts, but when you see those stories, you almost accept those. Like you're you're kind of like, well, they deserve it. I'm on the ghost side. Absolutely, you're actually become the ghost side, even though it's terrible what they're doing. Um, I think the '92 version doesn't really um, show that much of what Daniel Robotai that Candyman went through. Like you see what happened to him, but then you follow Helen of how she's trying to explain what is going on. Um, and then people think she's the killer. Like, so it's kind of the accusation of what he went through um, that maybe he, you know, did something to, to the, to the wealthy daughter, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but really he was just painting her and they fell in love, you know, and, and stuff like that. So with Daniel Robitaille with her, like uh -huh. trying, he's trying to use her to keep his story alive, but I think it doesn't convey as it did in the new one. So I won't spoil it for you, but in the new Candyman, 
you understand the candy man and i'm gonna leave it at that because i'm not gonna say anymore for those who have not seen it um by the time this video come out people have probably seen it you have too <laughs> but i don't um i just don't want to spoil it for you overheard and it says something like he's the hive and that made me think like he's just the the numerous rage constantly you know given to that society and he's just the hive and it was such a beautiful way to say that this is just the the collective rage of a society exactly yeah the it, the yeah, injustice the the new one is powerful it, it has a powerful message some people uh i read posts oh i didn't like it and i and it's it, it's okay um but for for those who are like oh it was all right you know it's like you missed the mark because it's either you like it or you don't you can't be in the middle with this film mm -hmm. because that means you didn't understand what it was trying to say i would suggest seeing it a second time and uh another well before i say this film is it possible to actually capture a ghost and keep it contained from everything that i have studied the answer would be yes if a ghost is energy um then yes it is possible to attach that to something or contain it we going ghost busting <laughs> uh, you could bust the ghost i'll watch the monitors <laughs> We, we don't know how to capture or contain, much less prove or disprove the, um, the spontaneous experiences that occur. However, if it is energy, then yes. The reason I say because um, these, these areas in the world that are um, suffering from these vengeful ghosts, um, spirits, whatever they may be, um, why can't you just get rid of them? Why do they stay? Even after, okay, so what I mean by that, they didn't perform something right or this person um, is coming back, but they have the, the, the culture, the spirits, the, the spices or whatever they use for these ceremonies to get rid of the ghost, but they didn't perform it right or it didn't happen. And the ghost comes back. Let's just say that. But why can't we find a way to get rid of them like can we send them to the light you know like <laughs> like poltergeist can we talk to them why do they still linger even after they have tried to do something about it what is your thoughts on that some theories are that we are born or we exist to learn a life lesson or perform a purpose and if that is the case, then it is quite possible that we still have that purpose or that lesson to learn afterwards. It may not be that we learn that in this physical body. It may be that we still have to do it or stay on this plane. Um, some other theories exist that some ghosts get so confused or they still have loved ones here that they're attached to or things that they're attached to. Like a lot of people are attached to their houses and they stay where their houses. Those are some theories. But what if like the candy man it is a collection of emotions every woman that's ever been murdered by her lover every mother who's had her child murdered um every every man who's witnessed his his home being burned or his village being overrun what if they become not like one entity but like a collection of emotions because of these exact same patterned injustices that's another theory too so they can become their own hive that would be another theory definitely the reason i say because there's one particular film that i absolutely just love i've seen it multiple times and <clears throat> i just wanted to uh point this out because i believe that film really shows how the physical form of a vengeful ghost um and there's multiple, multiple of them. Do you have an idea what movie I'm going to... No, no, no. What is it? What is it? 13 Ghosts. Oh, oh <laughs> love that one. Oh. Yeah, that one really shows Oof. the physical form of being hurt. Right. And just, you know, 
just it's destroy. So cool. Yeah, and, and some of them even hurt themselves, but just accidents could just be a constant reminder of 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 a fate that they cannot move on. Thirteen uh, ghosts, the opening scene when you just look at him looking out the window at his wife and waving to his family and the camera slowly pans around the room and you hear the fire start and you hear the kids screaming and crying, where's mom? And you mm -hmm. hear the, um, the heart monitor in the hospital and then the camera pans into the, the dead parts of the house where it's burned and charred. And I mean, that was one of the best openings I've ever seen. Also, Matthew Lillard, is that his name? Mm -hmm. One of the best performances I've ever seen. Oh amazing. yeah, that yeah. was amazing. I would love to see an entire movie on that character, where he's so um, psychic that you can't touch him, and he has you know all these these visions in his head. It was an amazing character. Yeah. Um, I mean, many people want some kind of show with thirteen ghosts, like a oh. series or something. Yes, it yes. has. I mean, everybody is screaming for it, but nobody has come forward to even think about it. Oh. I think it's so complex that it has to be done right. But the movie, I think, really um, showed something. And I think it's a really good example of yes. vengeful ghosts of them physically can harm you. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So some of the ghosts here. Uh, so ba basically, it's a family um, who suffered, you know, a loss of a loved one. Um, and out of the blue, an uncle you know, long lost uncle or whatever you want to say, hey, I have a house for you because the family's also in debt, and, you know, hospital bills and whatnot. I have a house for you. Come stay in it. And the fortune is yours. So they decide to do it. But the house is made of glass with some weird writings. By the way, and, the house is very bizarre. <laughs> yeah, it is. Symbols <laughs> on all of the paintings. See, if, if I would have walked up to the house like that, you, I wouldn't have been in it. Like, I was like, nah, uh, it's okay. It, it's I, made of glass. <laughs> It, it was beautiful, but there was no privacy. Get get forget that. <laughs> Not really. Maybe yeah. the bathroom. Uh, uh, living with thirteen ghosts. I don't think so. <laughs> so anyway, the uncle has him standing there, but it's booby trapped. You know, the lawyer, the greedy lawyer, got to get the money. So, but he needed the family to be in the house, so he could perform this ritual, so he could, you know, open the gates of hell or something. Who knows uh, exactly? But um, he needed broken heart of a lover, kill himself or throw himself into a machine or whatnot. The Oculus. Yeah. yeah to, Inferno. in order to complete the ritual. And, you know, we'll, I won't say the whole film, but that's pretty much the gist of it. But the ghost that were in, the, the makeup effects was fantastic. Yep. Um, the story behind them in the brief moment um, that you encountered them in the film was unbelievable but you wanted more it made you okay where did they come from i mean we got the firstborn son which was just sad actually look up these stories but we want to see them live on on film i would love to know the origin how they become oh my goodness and on then the okay dvd there's extra background on each of the ghosts yeah on some of the DVDs. Um, but they need a show i, yeah. <laughs> I want to see it like that i don't want to be looking at little snippets <laughs> <laughs> on the that show. Was amazing. Um, anyway, so they have the torso, the bound woman, the withered lover, the torn prince, the angry princess, the pilgrimess, uh, the great child, and the dire mother. That was just sad. The hammer, the jackal, uh, the juggernaut, which was the most scariest for a lot of people were scared of the juggernaut. Um, and then this, and then that's it. So I was about to say something else, but but that's it. I hope that's uh, 13 of them. I Oh, well, no, actually, there's 12. Yep. The 13th would have been him if he killed himself to save his kids. But anyway, so when it says 13 ghosts, you're like, uh-uh, it's not 13. Yeah, technically not. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I think out of all of them, this the, the one that got me, the, that creeped me out was the torso. No head, no arms. No, it just... No, it did yeah. have arms. It had arms, it had arms. no legs, no head, and the head was in the bag sitting on the side. But the story behind that, see, you shouldn't be gambling. You shouldn't be <laughs> doing anything. <laughs> that wouldn't happen to you. But but that's terrible. That's why I mentioned, can you capture ghosts? 
you know how because if you're able to capture them and then get to see what they have manifest into i think that's scary so is any of those ghosts from the 13 ghosts like really scared you <laughs> or the, who was the one with the cage around their head that is the jackal that jackal scared me because he was like on mess <laughs> Like had superhuman speed and was like constantly clawing and screaming. Like, yeah. like I can't outrun that. I'm too <laughs> tired. I'm too old. That one scared me. I'm, like, I'm oh, too I'm old. Gonna I'm not going to make it. That one was fast. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of big and lumbering down the hallway. Like, I'm yeah. Not a chance. Okay. It's the spirit light going off. Oh, see, that's why it's in your house. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. I can't now, wait. Fun bit of trivia, movie trivia. The dire mother and the that fat baby ghost. <laughs> the great child. Baby, <laughs> the great child also played a baby in Trick and Trick or Treat for that little Sam creature I love. Oh. He also played a baby in that, and he was supposed to be the boy um date for the girl that turned into a werewolf. So strangely, that same actor played the same the same oh. role. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I would see that on Netflix. You know, like a series. We got the first one, second one, third, 13 episodes, you know. Yeah, that is a great movie. Yeah, so, there's too many great lines from that movie. Did I say there was a petting zoo downstairs? <laughs> <laughs> um, there were some points someone did touch him, but he yeah. didn't react. So I think he can control it to some extent. But I think if he's overactive, it's just because when he would touch it, he was like, he was like, like electro shock. He was yeah. like, don't touch me, stop. And he was like slobbering and spitting. Um, yeah. So veins were raised. Oh, great portrayal. I know he's he, acting on his part. Can you believe he was shaggy and scooby? <laughs> yes, I can. He was amazing. And then scream. He was, yeah. uh, yeah. So, yeah, he, he's an all around actor there. You don't see too much of him now, he, he, uh, which I think is kind of like sad. He, he needs to get, uh, he's maybe by choice. Some, some actors don't want to yeah. keep doing it all the time. I mean, 13 Ghosts is still going strong, and so is Scream. He's probably getting residuals. We don't know. So, but, great scary movies, great scary movies. Yeah. So, um, Vengeful Ghost, um, that is our, our topic of the evening. And I learned so much about this. Um, we basically, have, historically, I have one more for you. Okay, go ahead. Let's go. There is a case where a ghost has claimed murder. And this wait, is the wait. Bell. Oh, you said a ghost claimed murder? She's a spirit. And this uh -huh. is in um, 1820. The Bell Witch of Tennessee, very famous haunting, yeah, killed John Bell Sr. without question. Wow. She told everyone she was going to do it, and she did it, and he died on December 20th, 1820. And she was very um, gleeful about the entire experience. <laughs> oh, wow. He did once shoot at her, so she had some reason. Okay. Um. Another thing about that, I noticed during the times of the, the early 1900s, um, 1800s, from the, um, let me go with this, 1600s to the 1900s, I know a lot more paranormal activity during that time. I've noticed that. Um, what is your speculation on that? What do you, why would you think there's a lot more paranormal activity than it is now? I, I'm not sure that that's the case. I, I'm trying to understand the the perception. Um, mm -hmm. We have more recording devices now. We have more cameras, cell phones, um, audio recording. We're, we're capturing more anomalies now and learning what we can't explain and what we can't explain. I, I'm not sure that that's a shared perception, but I would like to know more about why. Now, spiritualism has always occurred historically, usually after wars immediately because moms just lost their sons fathers just lost their sons they want answers and they want reassurance that their children are okay and so that's when um spiritualism usually occurs that's when people start having seances that's when they go to the fortune tellers usually after large wars 
or, or plagues, for example, pandemics like we're having right now, where we've lost a, a large amount of people. So historically, that's when it usually peaks. However, right now we do have so many more recording devices, audio and visual, and we're getting um, s some amazing anomaly results. Yeah. Because we do have things we could capture things versus at the time. So I probably the same, we probably have the same experiences from back then, the same amount. It's just that they couldn't capture like we could capture now. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're getting, we're getting better at it in our technology and we're learning better how to communicate without question. There's always the Ouija board. <laughs> well, that's a whole nother segment. <laughs> it seems to work very well. And I have one and you won't catch me using it. <laughs> Maybe we should record ourselves doing that. Nah, I'll be the first to go. <laughs> I've seen other people doing it. Oh, no. <laughs> like, from a little glass cage. We'll be like, oh. Okay. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. But um, but yes, thank you so much, Dr. Levy. Today we talked about uh, Vengeful Ghost, and I learned so much around the world that the ghosts out there, they're just they just want to be heard. Basically, that's all it is. Um, and some are, are heard, but they just, they still seek in revenge because what has happened to them was centuries ago and they still haven't, you know, went, you know, rest or, or anything. So, but thank you so much. Um, if you love this video, <laughs> love or hearing us talk like about paranormal, supernatural, and the unexplained, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, like and leave a comment. Maybe your talk about your experiences and stuff like that. Uh, we would love like to hear to them. Use Ouija board while we watch you. <laughs> Let us know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know. Yep. <laughs> See, and if something happened, we'll be responsible. I, we'll I can't. record it for science. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that is funny that should be one of our topics you know like actually devices that people have used to summon things we should yeah but should. i'll i, I have i have a ouija board. i'll look at it and talk about it but i won't touch it <laughs> you've got the emf reader too. oh yeah that's right i do have that well yes. I, I don't know I, I, girl <laughs> We'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Until next time, Dr. Levy. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank you. You're amazing. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.